Hey, this is Jeffrey Davis from the Fun Times Guide to Living Green here with Dale Hurst and Jeff Fitzer. Dale is of the Director of Marketing of Carmike Cinemas. That's correct. And Jeff is... Uh, Say it again. Director of Special Projects for River City Company. With River City Company. We're here in Chattanooga, Tennessee at the soon-to-be grand opening of the Majestic 12, the first ever LEED certified movie theater in the country uh, here in this little town of Chattanooga. Dale, tell me, what inspired Carmike Cinemas to get on board with a project like this? Well, you know, we've always had a presence here in Chattanooga, especially downtown. And, uh, you know, I always say it's all about timing. And, of course, our Bijou has, you know, operated very well for us. And, you know, of course, Jeff and his company has been spearheading this whole downtown and this big green movement. And, of course, you know, when they approached us about uh, maybe upgrading or updating, we said, sure, why not? And the whole green thing fell right into place. Cool, cool. Is living greener something that's important to Carmike Cinemas as a whole, or is this kind of a first endeavor for you guys? This is our first, but how could it not be, you know, important to everybody? I yeah. mean, it's a very, very, very serious thing we all should be, you know, looking at. The question I know that a lot of we've been getting from our readers and from other people in the green media world is, why Chattanooga? <laughs> this is this, this little town. Everyone's like, where is Chattanooga even located? Uh, why Chattanooga? You know, I think Jeff can answer that question very well for us. Okay. Well, you know, I'll, I'll back up to... to what, 12 years ago when yeah. Carmike first yeah. decided to come down here, Chattanooga really was a very unique town that had kind of taken the bull by the horns, if you will, in urban revitalization and turning around a downtown and a waterfront that was in decay. So it was just a natural when we got to the next phase of, of development and we're looking for a better animator, kind of the next big ride, sure. if you will. We said, well, you know, we want to bring our good, sure. our good partners and friends at Carmike along with us. They were excited. We were excited. So it's, it's been a good fit from day one. People that don't know Chattanooga, I know whenever I'm here, I'm like, just send me my stuff. You know, <laughs> I love it down here. Um, people don't know that there's, the city is so bike friendly for bike commuting. Um, there's a, your your um, buses and shuttles are EVs, are they not? They're electric vehicles, are they not? That, that's correct. We have a free electric shuttle that runs the, the length of downtown. It's uh, zero emissions and it's free to the public and uh, generally packed at lunchtime. What are some of the, the, the big time green features of the, the theater? And let's kind of go with both things that are obvious to the patrons and things that maybe are behind the scenes that you wouldn't know unless you were told. Sure. Great question. And we'll start with the obvious ones. If you look at the back side of the theater, there's a 10,000 gallon cistern wow. and it actually captures all of the rainwater off the roof or at least as much as it will hold. And that water gets filtered and uh, pumped through the, uh, the, the um, plumbing system to flush the commodes and urinals. So we're actually capturing storm water, holding it, processing it, and using it to cut down on the amount of water used in the building. Uh, you look around this lobby and, and you see all of the daylight. Daylighting is a, is a better work environment. It's a more soothing light. And it also cuts down on the need for electricity. Actually, 60% of a building's heating and cooling load in a typical building comes from cooling the light bulbs. Right. So these lights are on an electrical sensor that actually they, they don't come up cool. until the daylight uh, is, is not sufficient enough to illuminate the space. And Very cool. We have high efficiency LED light bulbs throughout, high efficiency uh, heating and air conditioning systems. The exterior brick, another very visible uh, green feature, was actually built in a, uh, a regional plant so it meets the local sourcing criteria for lead. It was also fired in a kiln that was powered with methane gas from a landfill. Wow. So it's capturing this wasted energy and putting it to, to good use. Cool. Same thing we, with cool. recycling materials. There's a high content of recycled materials in the steel as well as the recycled energy in the brick. Uh, over 93% of the waste material generated in the construction of the property was saved from the, it was diverted from the landfill and went nice. to be recycled. So has the final result come in as to what level of lead certified the, the, the theater is? Yeah, well, and I, it's glad that you asked. It's not actually lead certified yet. It is sure. it's the first lead registered right. standalone movie theater, and we're solidly tracking for gold certification. Really? Solid, solidly gold. Solidly gold. Yeah. Great. Um, and this is something that we've got to realize here the past few days. We talk about lead all the time, kind of in this green world, but a lot of the, just the normal people in the world are like, what's lead? Yeah. What is that? So, can you just really quickly, what are you guys' take? What is lead, and why is that important for? industrial developments and residential developments. And of course, LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and that's really what this is about. We, uh, River City Company and uh, in downtown Chattanooga has 
a program called Green Spaces, and mm -hmm. one of their key missions is to stimulate at least 20 LEED certified buildings in downtown Chattanooga. We're already tracking 26 of those. Awesome. And, and LEED is important because it, it causes us to think about the building process and how we inhabit buildings differently. You know, building codes really today just have a, it's a minimum health and safety issues. You know, what keeps the building from falling down, people don't get electrocuted. LEED, <laughs> LEED really takes it to the next level. For business. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. and, and we're very glad that our building codes officials do that. But, but LEED really says, you know, let's think to the next level. What does a responsible building look like? With responsible use materials, with, you know, obviously the, the, the operator of the building get, gets lower uh, um, uh, operating costs over time. Sure. So, you know, heating and cooling is lower. But, but it's, just, it, it's just good for the community. The buildings are more durable, they're more robust, and, uh, you know, hopefully we're look back just like we do with the old Bijou Theater. Sure. Sure. We look back when, the, when, you know, we hope theaters here for a very long time, but the theater next door was built with the future in mind, mm. actually so that it could be adaptively reused. Mm. So another aspect of how we think, you know, yes. think through time to make sure we're not building cheap buildings that we want to throw away, right. but buildings that we celebrate and want to use for, cool. for a very long time. Well guys, thanks a whole bunch. Uh, this has been Dale Hurst and Jeff Fitzer uh, and Jeffrey Davis with the Fun Times Guide to Living Green.